section 17 in its entirety, pages 162 and 163, unites the forehand. The sensation that the opening rein delivers to the horse is a feeling of one side of a snaffle bit being more predominant than the other one and a feeling of that snaffle bit advancing on a lateral in a lateral way to one side so he feels one side of his bit alone and he feels that bit moving towards one side. Today, we're going to study section 17. Just as when you were a little kid, by the time you had the class on how to spell the word cat, you already knew what a cat was. You knew the difference between a drawing of a cat and a real cat. You already knew the alphabet, and you were probably already starting to sound out letters. Cat may have come during the lesson that you learned to spell out, that you learned to sound out letters. Now, all riding is the same way of learning and teaching and doing except that instead of letters, we have the natural aids, which is a language of sensations. And the horse feels the sensations caused by the aids and through us teaching him and him learning them, he associates actions with sensations. It is the association of actions with sensations. Our aids are meant to deliver information to him via sensation. The sensation that the opening rain delivers to the horse is a feeling of one side of a snaffle bit being more predominant than the other one and a feeling of that snaffle bit advancing on a lateral in a lateral way to one side so he feels one side of his bit alone and he feels that bit moving towards one side. We are going to talk about this today on the right side. He's going to follow it, follow his bit to the right. He's been prepared for this for quite some time. The very first time a bridle got put on him, he felt the bit and the farmer or the trainer probably touched the sides of the bit just like we see in this illustration. He then learned to follow the leading rein, which would either led him forward or to one side, on the lunge, and this paved, paved the way for the lesson he's going to receive today. He's going to realize that C-A-T spells cat. He already knows that it spells cat on the lunge line and in hand, and now he's going to experience the same sensation delivered by a rider on his back. This is the marvelous use of preparation. Preparation is training. So here we are on page 162. I expect that you have that in front of you. And figure A which is page 41. On page 162, in the second paragraph of section 17, there are two sentences. 
draw brackets around each of the sentences. Then, the way that we are, ride this instruction is by reversing these two sentences. The outside hand, which does not act, is carried forward and low so as not to contradict the active out opening rein. This shall be our first action. The outside hand does not act. Vanishing this, vanishing the influence of this rein, what I sometimes called emptying the glove, is the first action that the horse will receive sensation on. His first experience will be one rain, one side of the bit vanishing, zero influence. So in the legend, so in the legend, on page 41, figure A, reverse the first two instructions. Hand goes passive, the outside hand which does not act, is the first sensation he received, and the opening inside hand is the second sensation he receives. Reverse those two instructions on your legend in ink. This is a permanent change in the instructions. Then, to turn to the right, the rider opens the right rein gently, carrying the hand forward and to the right. Forward and to the right is the action. Gently forward and to the right. Practice this as you sit here listening this. This is like your hand moving forward and making a gentle right angle in space. You can imagine what this will do to the bit. Now the bit, therefore, is gently moving at a right angle in space and the horse will follow the bit. The bit does not take his head around. It does not pull his head around. Your horse has already been taught to follow the bit. So little by little, if my, my hand is leading the bit, is advancing the bit to one side and the horse follows it. If my hand remains in this leading opening position, the horse will continue following it around and you can see that this would form an arc. When the hand returns to home, to the horse's wither, the hand returns to home, his following ends. He will, he, the bit is not leading anymore, so he will no longer follow it. That is what must be taught to the horse. So the first sensation he feels is a vanishing of one rain. One rain disappears. There is zero influence. There, nothing's there. This automatically causes the inside, the opposite side of the snaffle bit to feel predominant in his mouth. He still can feel a hand there. Then that hand gently and in a tiny little way moves forward and to the right forward and to the right. He knows to follow it and he will therefore do so. He feels the outside hand, which does not act. He feels that zero action. He feels the rain vanish. He feels the glove go empty. Then he knows something's going to happen. Then he feels the inside rein gently lead him by the action of the hand going forward and to the right, 
the inside bit, the inside side of the snaffle bit, gently leads him to the right. He already knows I follow my bit. He will follow to the right. And how convenient for the enterprise to have the vanishing rain start the action of the turn. It's going to pave the way for the bearing rain, which is where we're going next, page 163. First, let's just quickly zoom through the rest of page 162. For your own notes, please draw parentheses around the bottom paragraph of page 162 and lightly scribble through it in pencil. We're not going to use this paragraph at this time. And quickly, let's go through paragraph 3, which really should be at the top. It reiterates something that we were told in section 27. It's the whole thing, all of training, depends upon the clearness of the first indications, his first impressions. It's very important that all sensations the horse is made to experience should come to him distinctly and clearly. So be very clear with your instigate, instigating, vanishing outer hand and very distinct with your causing forward and to the right opening rein hand. I don't think that there is a master who failed to mention it and that is the idea that we train the forehand to be displaceable. A displaceable forehand means that the forehand has zero weight on it and then the rider can place the forehand to the right or the left very quickly. Quickly, as quick as an eye can blink, as quick as an eye can twinkle, I mean quick. Now, when we talk about the forehand, we're talking about this entire section of the horse, the entire horse in front of the girth, not just his lower jaw or face or neck. This entire section of the horse is the forehand. And this idea that this entire section become displaceable by our rain action is very important to keep in your mind. Now, if I use the opening rain on its own, this will tend to move the neck off the center line of the horse's spine and disunite his forehand. That is, his head and face are going to go onto a separate plane than the rest of him. So for a day or two, the first day or two that he's learning the opening rein with a rider on his back, that's okay. But the moment that he understands to follow the opening rein, we introduce the bearing rein. This unites his forehand. The action of the bearing rein unites, binds, or weds the forehand. It makes the forehand into its own section that operates that operates together, not the one part of the neck doing something while the other shoulder doesn't follow. In short, the horse is taught to move away from the bearing rein as ardently as he follows the inner one. He knows to move away from the bearing rein, the outer rein, the 
as ardently as he follows his inner light. When he follows the inner rain ardently with his outer shoulder, the forehand is united. When the forehand is united, the left shoulder with her foreleg and the right shoulder with her foreleg, and therefore the neck, operate united together with neither shoulder with her foreleg bulging or sticking on the ground. If a horse bulges or pops his shoulder, it means his forehand was not united, and it is a sign of either greenness in the horse or careless riding. And if that is going on, it may call for some tough evaluation of the program you're in because this section is meant to be the start of the education. The horse should know this up front and early. And Western people do have this idea down better than English riding people in the United States. But I do not want you Western people to get puffed up about this because you, the neglect of the training of the hindquarters is so appalling that it really doesn't, it, the fact that you understand the forehand and the outside of the forehand bearing rein, neck rein, doesn't um, absolve the neglect of the hindquarters training. So this uniting of the forehand under saddle is the start of the horse's education. And as I've said, I do not want you to become obsessed with it and neglect the hindquarters. For that reason, our next study is on sections 34 and 35, which is regarding engagement and mobility of the hindquarters which is best started and maintained by training one-sided engagement via the about on the forehand, or sometimes known as the turn on the forehand. Most of you have learned that as a leg yield instead of an engaging event. For our purposes, the about on the forehand, the turn on the forehand, will always be treated as an engaging event, not a yielding, an engaging event. If you want to prepare for our next study, read sections 34 and 35, especially 34. Dwell in 34. The hindquarters are the seat of going and engagement is changing the joint angles by load bearing, by deliberate load bearing. Our deliberate adjusting the load upon the uppermost joints of the hindquarters is the means of transmission and managing the mobility of the hindquarters. It is the most important thing we will ever learn to do in riding. See you next time. This is the start of the horse's education. The forehand is going to become united and displaceable by the co-action of the opening and bearing rein. We need to see this in the very start of the education discernible and rideable in a horse starting, a four-year-old, and also in any horse that we might try to call finished. We must see this evident in a starting horse and a finished horse. So the horse's shorthand, what he knows about his bit is he knows I follow my bit. And I want you guys to remember, this bit 
imagine the bit as it really is. It is in space. It is sitting in his mouth, but the way that the horse feels the bit is as if the bit is in space. Our hand, via the reins, tenderly and slightly moves this bit in space. He knows to follow it. That's all that's happening here. Let's look at paragraph two, which are going to tell us exactly what our hand does to cause the sensation of a bit opening to one side.